Let's talk about how to use boss bars to represent the health of an entity, to display timers, or anything you want, really. At first glance, slash boss bar may seem kind of useless. I mean, you can add boss bars, you can set them to display for players, as you can set their values with the command, but you can't connect them to anything. There's no way in this command to say, oh, this boss bar should be equal to the health of this entity, or this boss bar should be equal to this score. And that's because it's in a different command. How wonderful is that? You can use the execute store command to store the result of any command inside of any boss bar. may not be immediately obvious what you can do with this, but for example, if we wanted this boss bar to equal the score of uh, some kind of timer objective that we had, if we add, add ourselves a timer objective here, sorry, <laughs> if we add ourselves a timer objective here, we say let's set uh, the timer to 60, sorry, timer, timer to 60, we can then set the boss bar to this value in the scoreboard. Store, result, boss bar, our cool bar has the value, run, scoreboard, players, get, timer, timer, 60. Sorry, not 60. There we go. And now the value, the score that timer has in the timer scoreboard is set to the value of the boss bar. You could run this in a repeating command block. Let me actually copy that command. Run this in repeating command block. And now the boss bar is always going to equal the score of timer. So we could do something like scoreboard uh, players set dot timer timer to one or 100. And the boss bar will update automatically. You can make this into an actual timer by having something like maybe a, um, a second score. So let's do something like scoreboard players set dot ticks timer or sorry, not set. <laughs> Oops. Add dot ticks timer one. Always active. Let's give myself a chain command block. Not a chain, a chain command block, please. <laughs> I can make this conditional. Execute if score dot tick timer matches 20, I think should be fine. Run scoreboard players add dot timer timer one and one more score uh, execute sorry slash execute if score dot tick timer matches 20 run scoreboard players set dot tick timer zero and let's just do one more here slash execute if score dot timer timer matches 100 uh 101 yeah sure <laughs> run scoreboard players set dot timer timer zero there we go and so we've just set up a basic timer so we're basically we're adding one to tick every tick and then once tick reaches 20 we're adding one to timer so it's a seconds timer and once tick reaches 20 we're resetting it back to zero so we don't keep counting up and once timer reaches 100, we're setting it back to zero because that's the max value of our boss bar right now. And I, I called it ticks here, and then I called it tick everywhere else, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. All right. Now we should be good. So now we have a seconds timer. Or not, apparently. <laughs> so dot tick to zero. Oh, I said dot ticks to zero. Whoops. And forgot to change that one to ticks as well. There we go. Now we have a seconds timer in our boss bar. Cool as that. We can change the max value of the boss bar. Uh, boss bar set cool bar max. We could make this 30 seconds. And then we could just make sure that this max is out at 30. We'll just do 31 just for fun. So you can see it at 30 for a little bit. Boom, and we have a little timer. How cool is that? We could also hook up 
this boss bar to an entity's health. So let's say we have uh, our little guy. Let me let me just uh, summon a guy here. We'll make sure that he is sort of in a little cage. You know, we don't want anything to happen to him, do we? What a weird cage shape. That's fine. And let's uh, let's give him a name as well. Oops. I always forget. Custom name. Uh, I don't know. Bob. Hi, Bob. How you doing? So, let's say that we want this boss bar to equal Bob's health. I think the easiest way that we can do this is make sure we tag our entity first. So let's do that. Since we're looking at him, we can just tab down to his UUID there. And we'll just give him the tag Bob. So now we know that Bob is Bob. How cool is that? <laughs> and now we can use the same sort of command to set the boss bar equal to his health. Execute, store, result, score. Nope, not score. I always do scores, but we actually want boss bar this time. <laughs> uh, value. And then we want to run data, get entity, e, tag equals Bob, sort equals. All right, now let's do this. This is a new tag, at n. So I'll just select the nearest entity. Tag equals Bob. And we just want to get his health. Okay, so you notice that that got reset immediately because uh, we still have this clock active. <laughs> but if we just replace it here, there we go. And now cool bar is equal to his health. Now the max of cool bar is currently 30, I think, and the husk's max health is 20. Unfortunately, mobs in Java edition don't have any way to get their max health from the entity. So if we look at this guy, you'll see that we can see his do -do -do -do, we can see his current health. But nowhere in here can we see what his max health is. So you'll have to set that up manually for whatever mob that you want to summon. But now if we hit Bob, you'll notice that our score of cool bar goes down. Until Bob is dead. Rest in pieces, Bob. You can actually add any command after the execute store. So we could set our boss bar to the number of blocks successfully filled in a fill command, for example. No blocks were filled. <laughs> it is important to use negatives sometimes. There we go. We filled two blocks. You notice our boss bar went up a little bit there. Boom. So feel free to go wild. <laughs> Hope you found this tutorial useful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.